Hello, Namaskar, Khambagani people. My name is Amrita and welcome back to my channel. So today, we're going to continue the topic the way we have left yesterday. That is the fundamental of life and we're going to discuss the fourth topic from the content that is cell structure. But before moving to that topic, a very short description about the cell shape and size. See, the shape of the cell and the size of the cell is different for each and every organ that we have. Why is it so? Because each and every cell has definite functions, a specialized functions that they have to perform and it is according to their shape and size. So just like amoeba, amoeba can change its shape, but there are certain cells that can't change their shape or their size. So the example is nerve cell. Their, their shape and their size is fixed and peculiar. Each and every cell of the body has a basic function to perform. But how does this function? How does the cell perform this function? So, it is a very simple answer. The answer is division of labor. Yes, just like us, the humans. So, like the heart pumps the blood and the stomach, which does the digestion. Now, this it is very interesting to know that the cell, inside the cell, the cell organelles also perform division of labor. Like some of the cell organelles will make up something and the other organelles will might pass those or might excrete them out of the cell. All these different different cell organelles that we're going to study in the next section. Uh, together, when they come up, like the plasma membrane, the nucleus, the cell membrane, the cell wall, mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum and many other, when they come together, they form the cell. It is, very, it is also very interesting to know that the same, the different different cell or cells of the organ have same type of cell organelles. So, what we have studied so far is that shape and size of the cell. What we have studied in that shape and size of the cell decides its function which is very important. Second point is that for example if I give you amoeba it is it can change its shape. If you have seen amoeba, you might you can see it always it always changes shape like in the diagrams in your books. It always see, you can always see that it changes its shapes. Okay? But there are certain cell, cells which whereas certain cells can't change its shape. Example, nerve cell. Each and every cell performs basic And how does they perform their basic function? Through division of labor. Just like us. Now, it is very also very interesting to know that each and every cell, like we have discussed so far, that Division of labor is also done by cell organelles. Okay, so so far what we have discussed 
that the shape and size of the cell decides its function. Okay, amoeba, on the other hand, can change its shape, but there are certain cells which can't change their shape, which means their shape and design is fixed and peculiar, just like nerve cell. Each and every cell performs certain basic functions, and how does they do? Do it through the division of labor, just like us. So, division of labor is also done by the cell organelles, like movement of the material out of the cell, making up something. Okay, now, so this is all we have for shape and size of the cell. Now, moving ahead to the next one, that is the cell structure, which means the cell organelles we now discuss. But what will be the first topic that we are going to discuss in the cell structure? So, before moving inside the cell, we need to discuss the outside the cell, which means we will discuss the plasma membrane or the cell membrane of the cell, which is the most outer layer of the cell. So let's continue with that. So the fourth topic from the content is cell structure. The first thing we will discuss about in this one is plasma membrane or cell membrane. Okay, now plasma membrane is the outermost covering of the cell. Suppose, if I just draw it over here, just this one, suppose this is the cell. So this outer layer, this outer layer of the cell is cell membrane or plasma membrane. Okay, now discussing about this, outermost layer, What it does? It actually protects the cell from the external environment. Protects the cell from external environment. specific feature which is it's that it is a porous membrane but still it will not allow anything to come in and anything to go out. If that would have been the case the cell out release would have moved out and the blood or the other substances might have entered into it easily. So because of this plasma membrane only allow certain or you can say selective materials to go in and out of the cell. And because of this unique feature, it makes the plasma membrane selectively permeable and or semi-permeable membrane. Allows only certain material in and out of the cell. Hence, it is semi-permeable or selectively permeable. Okay, now, what material can move inside the cell and outside the cell? Like, carbon dioxide, oxygen, water. So these are the three main substances that can easily enter inside the cell and can move outside the cell. But it is not that easy to move by their own, which means they can move freely. For that, they need a certain kind of a condition for their movement. So this condition is fulfilled according to their concentration, which means according to their amount. 
So, movement of material like carbon dioxide that is CO2 and oxygen carbon dioxide, oxygen that is O2 and water that is H2O can move through through plasma membrane via diffusion. So, as we have seen, so what we have discussed so far, that plasma membrane is the outermost layer of the cell. What it does, it actually protects the cell from its external environment and all the cell organisms because these cell organisms need to be provide, protected from the outside environment of the cell. Otherwise, the cell won't be able to survive near the organisms. Next is, there are certain materials that can move inside the cell and it can move outside the cell. But that movement is also restricted according to their concentration. Now, because of this, because it only allows us movement of certain or selective materials in and out, which gives it a unique property that is, it makes it semi permeable or selectively permeable membrane. The movement of the materials like carbon dioxide, CO2, that is oxygen, which means O2, and H2O, that is water, can move through plasma membrane only via diffusion. So this is we have discussed so far. Moving ahead in the in the plasma membrane or in the cell membrane. Now how does this diffusion process works? I hope you have heard this name, heard this term, and if not, there is no problem with that. We can discuss it easily over here. Now, diffusion. Talking about diffusion, as I said, that the movement of the materials like carbon dioxide, oxygen, and water has to fill for, uh, fulfill certain criteria to move in and out of the cell, and that is the higher concentration. Which means that diffusion, okay, from high concentration to lower concentration. And this whole term is we call as diffusion. Okay, so what is diffusion? Diffusion is a process in which the substance can move from highest concentration to lower concentration. So, what is diffusion? Diffusion is a power of movement of material from the region of high concentration to lower concentration. Okay, just like waterfall, it falls from high concentration from high level to the lower level. Now, the next thing is. Okay, so to understand this whole concept of diffusion, uh, we will take three situations over here. Okay, see what happens is that the movement of these substances in and out of the cell also depends on the other substances that are present into them. Like suppose, for example, the three situations that I'm going to take over here. Okay, so I'll draw a small item on this side to make you understand. So, this is one petri dish kind of a thing, or one beaker, small, small plate. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep one raisin into it. Okay, just make a raisin with another color. So this is a raisin which is there in the dish. Now what I will do, I will fill the 
this beaker with water. Okay, so the first situation is that we are discussing three situations over here. Like what happens if you put a animal cell or in a plant cell in a sugar or in a salt solution? What will happen? So first thing is that if you are going to put the raisin, we are taking cell as a raisin over here and we put this raisin into the water. Now this water is a plain water and it is a there is no added substances into it. Now what happens is, because this water, the concentration of water outside the basin, it is at higher concentration. Whereas the water concentration inside the basin, it is at lower concentration. So the movement of the water will be from outside to inside. So what we're going to write over here? If the concentration of water is higher outside the cell Then it will move inside the cell. Which is at lower concentration. And because the water is moving inside the cell, so what will happen with the cell? The cell will wanna swell. Okay, the cell will wanna swell, and because of this, this whole solution, this solution which is moving inside the cell, the water which is moving inside the cell, hence the solution is hypotonic. H Y P O T O N I C hypotonic solution. Okay, so this is the case when the concentration of water is higher outside than the inside the cell. So what will happen? The water will start moving from outside the cell to inside the cell, and because the movement of water keeps on going until and unless the water the water balance becomes equal on both the side. So because of that, the cell will wanna swell. Okay, if you just take some raisins and you soak them into the water and after some time you will see that they have swollen up. It is because the water has moved, the concentration of water was more inside, outside the cell. So it started moving and the solution is called to be S and because of that the raisins swell and the solution will be called as hypotonic solution. Okay, the next uh, situation will be the other way around, will be the second one or you can say the other way around. So the next situation is when the concentration of water is higher inside the cell and lower outside the cell. So if water concentration is higher inside the cell the cell then outside the cell then what will happen the cell will gonna Because water is moving outside, okay? So what will happen to the outside? Which means cell will gonna shrink. Cell shrinks and hence the solution will be solution is what would it be? It would be hypertonic solution. Okay, 
So what we have studied in the second situation that if the concentration of water is higher inside the cell, then it starts moving outside the cell and because of this, the cell shrinks because all the water is moving from inside the cell to outside. So the water concentration decreases inside the cell. So what will happen? The cell will want to start shrinking. And because of that, uh, the solution that will be called as the hypertonic solution. Now, this is the last situation which is being there in a way that the concentration inside the cell and outside the cell. Either you can say it is higher on both the side or lower both the side. You can take a vice versa situation. So in case if the water concentration is same as inside the cell and outside the cell then the cell will then what will happen? Will there be any difference with the uh, shape of the cell? No. The cell size remains same. And the whole solution will be called as isotonic solution. So, in case the concentration of water is same inside and outside the cell, you can say either it is higher or it is lower on both the sides, then if water concentration is same as inside the cell and outside the cell, then the cell size remains same, which means there will be, definitely there will be a movement of water that will want to take place, but the net movement of the water, which means the overall movement of the water becomes zero, okay, which means whatever amount of water has gone inside, same amount of water has gone outside. So in that situation, the uh, size of the cell remains the same and the solution will be called as isotonic solutions. Okay? Just few more things in this topic and then this topic, this plasma membrane or the cell membrane thing we're gonna end. Okay? So, see, not only just animal cells but also the plant cells as well as the unicellular cells, they also follow the law of osmosis. Okay? Now, uh, other than the water, the uh, cells of the plant or the animal cells uh, also require certain nutrients. But uh, these nutrients trans require, the transport of these nutrients require energy. Okay? So they can't do without the energy. So unicellular uh, organisms in plants, they both follow law of diffusion. As well as the cell also requires certain nutrients and the transport of those nutrients requires amount of energy. Okay, so this is the last thing that we want to discuss and last is the characteristics of your plasma membrane. I'm just writing the short form of the plasma membrane that is PM. Not the prime minister but the PM or the cell membrane or the CM, not the chief minister. Please do remember this thing. Okay, so next, so characteristics. So what is the most important characteristic of the plasma, of the a plasma membrane or the cell membrane is that they protect, protect the cell organelles, which is very important because in case the cell organelles are not being protected, then the whole cell will gonna die. Okay, it won't be able to survive. Made up of cell a plasma membrane or cell membrane is made up of organic molecules. And those organic molecules are the proteins and the uh, lipids made up of organic molecules like proteins and lipids. Okay. Next thing is what is this do? Uh, it uh, maintains the maintains the ion concentration. Ions are present in the water, that is ions such as sodium, potassium and chlorine, magnesium ions, calcium ions, these are present in the water and it is very important for the cell. They are present inside and outside the cell as well. These ions, certain of the, few of them are present inside and few of them present outside the cell and it is very important to protect the ion concentration. So maintains the ion concentration Maintains the 
cell shape. Very important. Okay? Because without the uh, shape of the cell, uh, without the plasma membrane, there is no shape of the cell. The cell will not be there. Even it will not be there. Okay? So these are the few characteristics of plasma membrane. So what we have discussed in the characteristics of plasma membrane or of the cell membrane protects the cell organelles. Very important because without the plasma membrane, the cell organelles can't survive. The whole cell is going to die. Made up of organic molecules like proteins and lipids. Okay? These are the organic molecules found in the body only. Maintains the ion concentration. As I told you, certain ions are present inside the cell and some of them are present outside the cell like sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, calcium and chlorine. These are the five or six types of ions which are present inside and outside the cell. Okay? Maintains the cell shape. Without the plasma membrane, there is no shape of the cell because there is no cell. Okay, if you find any other characteristic of plasma membrane, please add it to your notes by yourself. And this is all for today. We will continue this, this topic, the same topic that is a cell structure in the next class. And if you have any comments, suggestions or questions, please drop down in the comment box below. And please do like, subscribe and share our channel. Thank you.